The science has been there forever, right? This is what happens when you put a body in the ground. It's just a sped up version. Transforming it into a process that showed love and care that we needed to show to our people, that was our main challenge. My name is Bree. And my name is Katie. And we turn human remains into soil for a living. When we built Return Home, we didn't know that people would be visiting so frequently. And so we're in this industrial complex in Auburn, Washington. It took a little bit of work to make it warm and inviting and welcoming. This is our lay-in space. It's where families can choose to have a ceremony to say their final goodbye to their loved one. Paramation is the gentle transformation of human remains into life-giving soil. And it's legally known as natural organic reduction and most commonly known as human composting. Our services here cost $4,950 within Washington State, including a certified copy of the death certificate, picking their person up from where they passed away, and the terramation service itself. So our process is actually two phases. The first phase happens here in this vessel and it's the body making its transformation into soil. That's about a 30 day process. We open the vessel and what you have is beautiful soil, but bone remains and those are broken down um, into about two inch pieces that then go back into the compost so that the microbes can get at the inside of those bones and break them down completely over the second 30 days. I am Chief Operating Officer at Return Home, which means I oversee all of our processes, both with the families and funeral services. My title at Return Home is Services Manager, which means I work directly with the families to help them plan their funerals. I get people bathed and in their wisps and into their vessels. I wish that people knew how harmful the current offerings can be to both environment and operator. We don't use near the energy that a cremation uses. We don't use the hardwoods and metals that caskets for burials use. Everything that our bodies have to give is going back into the earth at the end. This is where we give everyone a bath when they come into our care. It helps protect their skin and keep them um, intact for a little bit longer if their family needs more time before they come into the facility to see them. We just have a standard shower loofah, um, some gentle soap, and then we're just kind of getting into all of the little places where there might be skin buildup or such that people get as if they've been dying for a long time. We like to wash the hair. That's my favorite thing to do. Post-mortem head massage. A lot of people, when they pass away, their eyes and mouth are open. We would make sure the mouth is closed and that the eyelids are closed and lined up as they should be and that the eyelashes are nice and clean. We place them in a compostable garment. My mother makes them and she will decorate them. We treat people like they were our family. And if somebody came into my care and they were a mother, I would treat them like I would treat my own mother. Our goal with creating our offices for Return Home was to bring comfort to people when they walk in just right off the bat. So when families are here for their people, we have this little sign out that says, when this candle is lit, a family is saying goodbye. It's partly to help people that work here know they need to stay quiet, but also when people come in the door, they understand that we might not be you know, right there because we're with a family. We always have little pockets of soil all over the funeral home because we think it's really important that people see and understand the final product. Right next to our lobby is Bree and I's office. This is where all of the magic happens. When someone starts in the death care industry, maybe like $40,000 a year should be expected. And then as you gain experience, you can make up to maybe $65,000 a year. The average career is five years long for people because they get into the profession and then they realize how demanding it is and they realize how the compensation is maybe not what they were hoping for and they seek venues elsewhere. Return Home very early on made a commitment to all of us to give more than the industry generally does to their people. I will be going to the airport to pick the body up. He should be bathed already, but I'd like you to just give him a once over because he is a young man and he was in a pretty bad accident. So we just want to make sure that he's clean before he goes into his vessel. And call his family to let them know he's here? Yep, of okay. course. Because the work is so heavy, it makes for a lot of levity to be able to sit across and, and, you know, make a joke here and there, share a meme. The best times is when we get to just like have a real belly laugh after working a really difficult day. 
Working with Katie is the best thing that's happened to me professionally, second to getting the actual job here at Return Home. Do you want to know something about Brie? She does uh, bird noises somewhat obsessively. And I'll just be <laughs> sat here and I'll hear like, bah -bah! from over there or I'm somewhere in the facility and she is calling me by using a bird sound. Oh, wow. Like that. <laughs> and there was People a reply. After we lay the compostable garment, then that person is ready to be placed into their vessel. We would bring the table with the person on it next to the vessel, and then we actually have a lift, but for Mr. Skelly, Katie and I have no problem being able just to lift him into the vessel and place him gently. And families are able to place into the vessel things that are meaningful to them and their loved ones, such as candy or letters. We place the remaining organics on top of the person. So they're kind of sandwiched in between the two layers. The body itself is actually what drives the whole process because the microbes that are inside of your stomach and in your gut that digest your food are the same things that break you down after you pass away. And so we're just taking that natural process and optimizing the area in which that takes place. Once the laying in process is over, we close the vessel. It's sealed and not opened until the terramation process has completed. This is a vessel that has been decorated. We did not expect our families to do this at all in the beginning, um, but we had one family kind of start the trend and then people started just making beautiful things with lights and photos and all kinds of different things because terramation is a 60-day process, we get to really take families by the hand now and guide them through the grieving process and guide them through the months following the death and be a resource to them the entire way through. Natural organic reduction has been legalized in Washington, Oregon, Colorado, Vermont, and most recently, California. We plan on expanding because ultimately we would love to serve people in their local area. Um, right now we've helped serve over 15 different states plus Canada and people are shipping their loved one to us. This area is what we would call our scattering ground at the Woodland. And this is where we place people when their families can't take the full amount home with them or choose not to, and choose to place their people in an area where it contributes to the local flora. It's an area that is made and intended to stay wild in perpetuity. So there's never to be anything developed on this property. We've had a lot of different reasons that people have chosen to put soil here just from Physically, they can't take as much. They live in an apartment in downtown Seattle and they just can't take it all. We're finding that about 70% of our families take the whole amount home with them. This is where Drew is at. He was my uh, first family that I took care of at Return Home over a year ago. After the body decomposes completely, there's about 200 pounds of soil left. Drew was a, a big muscular guy. Uh, he probably made about 300 pounds and there's probably about 150 pounds of him here. The rest went home with his family. When I pass, it is the only option that I will choose. I have been witness to the other options. I have participated in the other options and there is nothing that sits with my soul as well as Terramation does. I would want my soil to go to like a garden or a preserve or something where people could walk by and sit on a bench with my name on it. I see myself among like a lot of colorful flowers. I've seen some stuff, you know, I guess that's all I can say. But no matter how many hard things I've ever seen, it hasn't really affected my view on dying because I know that when it's your time, it's your time. And sometimes you're young and it's freak and it's awful. And sometimes you're old and you've lived a hundred years and now you have a beautiful story to tell. So death doesn't scare me at all, but certainly seeing certain things make you reflect on the way that you die. Death, it happens to all of us and it's, it's beautiful. It's not the terrible thing that people think it is most of the time. Most people, when they're in their vessel, they just look like they're peaceful. There's just a peace that comes over people that you just know. They're, they're okay, wherever they are. They're good. 
To be able to see life live on in the soil that we send back to families is what makes this process so miraculous and really makes it so that I could never go back to the funeral industry as it was.